So Adeline is asking, should Christians circumcise, seeing how God told Abraham to circumcise his offspring, Genesis 17, 9 to 14, seeing how it is God's instruction and not directly Mosaic law, also Old Testament law? All right. So that, Adeline, is a really good question. And I have to say, you know, I hear what you're you're saying. I hear where you're coming from, uh, because, you know, when we read things in the Old Testament, it sounds like, you know, God is speaking directly to his people, which he was. Um, he was speaking directly to Abraham uh, back at that time in the book of Genesis. Uh, however, that doesn't mean that what God said to one person at one time is necessarily what he's saying to all people to all of time. Um, and there's many examples of this um, in the Bible, you know, uh, and, and so, you know, like when we look at the book of Moses um, or the law of Mo Moses, excuse me. So like in the first five books of the Bible, um, those were written by Moses and um, he was, he wrote all the book of the law. He wrote a book of the law, which was like the Levitical law laws. We see in the, um, book of Leviticus, the book of Deuteronomy, the book of Numbers, and we see all these different laws, but not all of those are um, longstanding or, you know, um, you know, something that was set up e eternally. They're part of the book of the law, the, the law of Moses. And so I would say circumcision is part of that um, book. And I'll show you in the New Testament where we see Paul writing about circumcision very plainly as far as how um you know, it's not necessarily something that's required anymore for God's people, but it's also not something bad either. Um, there's lots of things, you know, that were part of the sanctuary services that were part of the Mosaic law that are, you know, they're not bad things. It's just they're not re requirements at this point in time um, after the, you know, the coming and sacrifice of Jesus. So let's go ahead and look at that really quick, because I do um, want to make sure that, you know, you feel that your, your questions addressed. So actually um, I'll look, we'll go ahead and go to the book of Romans chapter two and verses 25 through 29. So here um, Paul is speaking about circumcision because he was a Jew himself. He was actually part of the Sanhedrin, which was like a top religious Jewish leader. And so he really knew the law very, very well. But when he was converted as a Christian, he had to um, go away for a few years and just study the Bible and find Christ for himself in the Old Testament, which you will do if you really study the scripture. And so um, when you look at the book of Romans, chapter two, verses 25 through 29, he says some things that are very specific to circumcision. And so here we read in, like I said, Romans chapter two, 25 through 29, it says, for circumcision is indeed profitable if you keep the law. And the law he's talking about is uh, 225. <laughs> our, our producers a little bit back. Um, so going back to uh, Romans chapter 225, excuse me, it says for circumcision is indeed profitable if you keep the law. And he's talking about the law of Moses, um, which you see in Deuteronomy, like a, the summary of it in Deuteronomy chapter 30. Um, it says if you keep the law, but if you're a breaker of the law, your circumcision has become come uncircumcision. And 26 is, therefore, if an uncircumcised man keeps the righteous requirements of the law, will not his uncircumcision be counted as circumcision? And will not the physically uncircumcised, if he fulfills the law, judge you, who even with your written code and circumcision are a transgressor of the, transgressor of the law? For he is not a Jew who is one outwardly, nor is, a cir nor is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew or God's people who is one inwardly and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit, not in the letter whose praise is not from men, but from God. So here, um, Romans chapter two, 25 through 29 shows something very, very clear as far as what circumcision is all about. The real meaning of why God even in, in started the, the process of, or the the act of circumcision in the first place. It was that it was supposed to be um, a physical out manifestation of an inward belief that you were basically saying the most intimate part of your body as a male is, you know, we're going to give that first and foremost piece um, as almost a sacrifice to God, basically just showing that you're set apart in a special way. And 
But, you know, Paul is saying, look, it's not so much the physical act of being circumcised. It's more about you saying, God, I want you to have, you know, to take away, you know, um, basically, I want you to have the most intimate part of myself. And I want you to, uh, and I want to be set apart for you. And so he's, when he's saying back in, you know, verses, um, Romans chapter two, verse uh, you know, 27, he's saying, you know, the physically uncircumcised, if he fulfills a law, he will judge you because he's saying, because, you know, a lot of people might be circumcised and that's a not a bad thing. But if somebody's not circumcised, maybe they're not raised, you know, in the church or whatever, but they are more righteous. They show the law, which is God's love. God is going to say, this is my people not somebody that just has an outward form or formality. And so I think that's really the the point that uh, Paul is trying to make here. And I think that's really the message of so many things in the God, in the Bible is that a lot of people take things like, oh, like verbatim, like, well, I'm right because, you know, the Bible says, you know, thou shalt not commit adultery. So I don't commit adultery. But then Jesus goes and tells us like, you know, in Matthew chapter five, it's not enough that you don't commit adultery. The spirit of the law says, you know, um, that even if you look on a woman to lust, that you've committed adultery already in your heart. And so it's more the heart of the law that you're trying to live, not just the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law, which is a, a law of love. And God talks about his law as the law of liberty. It's a law of freedom. And it's a beautiful thing, not something that we need to, um, that we're, you know, having to do to try to earn our salvation, not by any means. God gives us salvation by grace through faith. But uh, we only practice certain things and we keep God's law because we love him. Just like Jesus says in Matthew 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. And so just to reiterate this really quick, also in the book of Romans, if you go down two more, two, two more chapters, um, it, Paul reiterates, you know, it's more about faith than, you know, the act of circumcision. So if you go to Romans chapter four in verse nine, um, Paul also goes on to say something really beautiful here. And he says, you know, does um, Romans chapter four, verse nine, and he says, does the blessedness that come upon the circumcised only or upon the uncircumcised also for we say that faith was accounted to Ab abraham for righteousness and he makes a very interesting point here in verse 10 he says how then was it accounted while he was circumcised or uncircumcised not while circumcised but while uncircumcised abraham received his promise while he was yet uncircumcised he was not he had not yet gone through with it but he believed god's word by faith and that's what accounted him for righteousness that's where he um, had the stamp of approval by God. And in verse 11, uh, Paul goes on to say, and he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had while still uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all those who believe, though they are uncircumcised, that righteousness, righteousness might be imputed to them also, and the father of circumcision to those who are not only a are of the circumcision, but who also walk in the steps of the faith, which our father Abraham had while still uncircumcised. So again, here we see that Paul is reiterating this point that it's not so much about the outward act of circumcision. It's about the faith you have in God and in Jesus Christ. And so I would say, you know, if you feel convicted to have your child circumcised, it's a, it's not a bad thing. There's many health benefits I've heard about for having a child circumcised. However, it's not a necessary requirement to be part of God's people. It is only by faith that we are saved, <laughs> that it's only by grace through faith that we are saved. And it is this faith that will um, make us part of God's people, God's holy people, for the just shall live by faith, right? That's reiterated in the Old Testament as well as the New. And it's not the just shall live by circumcision by these outward acts so much as much as an inward transformation of your heart through faith in God. So that would be my answer to your question. Mm -hmm.